This is the Hernan Vasquez podcast where we discuss techniques to bring traffic, convert, and monetize. Hi, my name is Hernan Vasquez and I want to help you grow your online business with the latest real world techniques that work. Visit me on hernanvasquez.com. Let's get to work right now. Hello, folks. Welcome to the episode 33 of the Hernan Vasquez podcast. This is Hernan Vasquez again with you. It's really a pleasure to have you here today because if you're looking to increase your client space, if you're looking to increase the intake of leads that you take day in and day out, then you're in for a treat. After popular demand with our Facebook group, the real internet marketing group that you can join by clicking on one of the links below this episode, we have had a lot of questions asking, how can I get more leads using LinkedIn? And since my experience is like really limited when it comes to LinkedIn and LinkedIn marketing, I promised the guys that I would go out and find a LinkedIn marketing expert that's actually generating leads with the platform. And there I found my friend and partner, Jeremiah Smith, who is killing it on LinkedIn and he's gonna be sharing some of the golden nuggets and the techniques that he's using to generate a ton of leads using LinkedIn as the main vehicle. With a passion for both direct response marketing and online marketing, Jeremiah is a digital marketing expert who focuses on building complete online marketing campaigns for select partners and small business owners that offer a high value to their clients. Since founding Smith & Associates Media LLC, he's used contextual research and consulting tools to help his client develop breakthrough online marketing and lead generation strategies while helping them increase customer base and ROI. So I'm really, really excited about this opportunity to talk hand in hand with Jeremiah so he can pour some of his knowledge on our heads. All right, guys. So without further ado, let's welcome Jeremiah Smith. Hello, my friends. Welcome back. I'm here with my friend and partner, Jeremiah Smith. How are you doing, Jeremiah? Good, Hernan. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing really, really good. Excited for today's episode because, you know, as we were talking earlier today, we had some feedback about how to use LinkedIn, you know, to generate leads and how, you know, to increase um, one's revenue by using that strategy, which is, I think it's a great tool. My um, my experience is like really limited with LinkedIn, so I hope you can shed some light with uh, regarding that and the, the results that you have been having with that tool. So I'm really looking forward for this interview. Yes, thanks, Hernan. And really, I want to thank you to uh, be part of the podcast. I'm honored to be here among uh, several other uh, top marketers. So uh, I'm really uh, glad uh, to be here, and I'd be happy to share uh, with you what I'm doing and, uh, and how I got started. Awesome, awesome. Sounds good, sounds good. But, you know, before diving into that and before actually going into the strategy and the nitty-gritty of what you are doing right now, uh, I would like to know a little bit about your background, you know, um, maybe about your story and basically how um, you ended up in this internet marketing niche and how you ended up what you're doing now. So could you share a little bit about your story and your background? Sure. Uh, would you like the short version or the long version? <laughs> the version that's more comfortable for you. We have time, so no worries about that. Okay. So, um, you know, I got in this internet marketing game um, at a time when I needed a new way to generate leads. Um, I, I was a mortgage broker uh, for a long time. And uh, I started, I think, in 2003 or late 2002. Mm-hmm. And uh, back in 2007 and 2008, as you know, a lot of you probably know, the, the mortgage meltdown happened. And uh, what I was doing before to generate leads, which was basically just sending out direct mailers, uh, was not working anymore because uh, the products that we were uh, trying to sell the mortgage products were no longer available. Uh, so uh, I needed a new way to generate business. And uh, the way traditionally that most uh, mortgage professionals uh, generate leads is by developing uh, realtor relationships. So real estate agent relationships um, with realtors in the area. And uh, usually, the way they do that is that 
you know, I, mean, I think in most cities throughout the United States, there are realtor meetings where they get together every week and talk about what's going on in the market, uh, new changes, uh, uh, strategies, things like that. So basically, as a loan officer, you would show up to one of these meetings and hand out your business cards and say, "Hi, I'm Jeremiah. You know, I work for this uh, mortgage company. Uh, please send me your leads." Right. And while that may work, the problem with that strategy is that it takes a long time to uh, build and develop a relationship with somebody. Uh, no matter what kind of relationship that is. I mean, if you first meet a woman, you're not going to ask her to marry you on the first day that you met her, right? right. So that's kind of like what a lot of mortgage brokers do. They say, hey, here's my business card, you know, send me your, your deals. Mm -hmm. So uh, I didn't have the luxury of time, of uh, time to develop the relationship with a mortgage broker uh, for them to start sending me business. I needed to start getting business right away. So um, I had gone to actually a seminar, which I don't even remember what kind of seminar it was, and they talked about you know, uh, generating leads uh, as a mortgage broker for, realtor, for realtors, that that would be uh, a much more effective way of working with real estate agents. So I taught myself to build you know, at the time, simple little HTML websites uh, that were lead uh, generating websites. And um, then I would put ads, you know, wherever I could. You know, I, I sent out postcards in the mail. I put ads on Craigslist to get people to go to this lead generating website. And I got to a point where I was generating about uh, five to ten mortgage leads per day. Uh, which isn't very much, but those leads were highly targeted. They were people that were genuinely interested in getting information about buying homes. Right. So then all of a sudden, my approach was different. Uh, my approach, instead of going to a real estate agent and saying, Hi, I'm Jeremiah, here's my business card, send me your leads. I would go up to a real estate agent and say, I have leads for you. Do you want to work with me? And, you know, that change was amazing because I had about five realtors working with me within the first 30 days of generating leads. They said, yeah, I, I want leads. You know, how can I get leads? Um, so uh, they immediately started working with me and I didn't have to try to take them out to coffee or to lunch, you know, to develop a relationship for them to start you know, sending me business, it was, it was an immediate thing. Mm -hmm. um, and um, how I got into this, that's how I kind of discovered the world of internet marketing, even though I didn't really know what I was doing. Right. I thought that it was pretty cool to just build simple HTML websites. Um, and uh, that's, that's basically how I started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I think that's a beautiful story because, you know, when you're changing your game, I mean, you're stepping up your game in a way that you can become your own traffic broker and your own lead broker, you become your own boss and you will, you know, you switch the position of power, you know, and you can actually go ahead and, and affect positively, uh, in a positive way, other people's business and other people's, you know, way of living just because of the systems that you have in place and because of the conversions and, you know, pretty much all of the of of the system and the new approach that you're developing so i think that's a great way of demonstrating a new position of power so as you were saying you know you would be you know the one ruling the conversation you will be the one you know telling what to do and what not to do what to say and what not to say and you're not in that position of dependency anymore so i think that's super super important and you know fast forward to today uh what would you say is your main stream of income right now? Sure. Let me just back up a minute um, to what you were saying. Sure. I definitely agree mm -hmm. um, with what you said, and that's that was definitely a huge part of it. But I think the main the main difference between me and any other loan officer is that I was trying to give value to those real estate agents first. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. And right. I think we forget a lot about that, even um, people that just uh, have online businesses, because um, they forget to give more value um, uh, than uh, what they're asking for. So, for example, if you have a lead generating page, an opt-in page, you know, you want to try to give as much value as possible before you ask for that email address. Mm -hmm. Or once they get on your list, you want to try to give as much value as possible before you ask them to buy uh, your product. So, yeah, I think, I think that was the main thing that I was doing different is I was providing value up front without asking them to give me anything first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, to answer your question uh, about what my mainstream of income right now is, uh, right now I am working with, right now I have a service business where I provide uh, lead generating systems for uh, uh, small business owners like mortgage professionals. I'm talking to a lot of mortgage professionals right now because the real estate business in the United States is uh, starting to boom again. Um, so there are a lot of mortgage professionals getting back into the business. Um, so I'm talking to them a lot about building a, um, a lead generating system so that they don't have to buy leads from somebody else and they can control what they do with those leads. And uh, the other source of income that I have right now is that partnered with a few different uh, online business owners. There's a, a really big online business product owner who also does a lot of coaching. Uh, you guys may have heard of him. is Jordan Belfort. The Wolf of Wall Street movie came out. So... Uh, mm -hmm. I'm partnered with this company, and we're selling a lot of his products online. Those are those are two main streams of income that I have right now. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I um, I see what you're getting. So, I mean, you need to have developed a lot of skills, you know, to progress from those HTML sites that you were developing back in the day, you know, to now uh, a full blown, you know, uh, internal marketer that are promoting like affiliate products because that's basically, you know, if I, if I get that right with the Jordan Belfort deal that you are pushing for i mean and also you know to be providing those kind of solutions for other partners so uh congratulations because you need to have developed a lot of skills in order to do that right now and become profitable you know regarding you know my uh my project um with uh jordan belfer i started off as a as a standard of affiliate where basically i had signed up for their affiliate program um, and actually, this is an interesting story because they didn't even have really an affiliate program available when I wanted to start selling his product. So what I did is I started uh, generating traffic with search engine optimization with SEO to a website that I had created around his products. But it was crazy because, you know, I was getting about ten to 15,000 visits a month and I didn't have any product to sell them. <laughs> wow. So what I started doing uh, is I was, I basically put an opt-in form and I started generating leads. Um, so, um, it was kind of, uh, I didn't, I wasn't finding the right people to talk to in Jordan Belfort's company until I finally did. And again, it was kind of like the same thing, you know, what, what I said to, what I used to say to mortgage brokers or is, or I'm sorry, to real estate agents, is I told them, listen, I have a site right now that gets about 15,000 visits a month for people who are interested in buying Jordan Belfort's products, and I have a list of 2,000 people who are interested in his products. I need to get an affiliate program, right? You know, you guys need to give me access to that. So they said, oh, really, is that true? Let's get on a phone call. So I got on a phone call with them, and they gave me access to their affiliate program that they weren't advertising and that they didn't have. Um, so from then on, you know, I became more of a partner with them because they saw the things that I was doing and they saw that I was doing that I was doing things the right way. So um, they actually uh, allowed me to have a lot more control of the sales process to sell their product. We're not just um, uh, sending uh, traffic to their to their sales page, we've actually developed our own funnels to sell Jordan Belfort's products. Um, so that's what we're doing, and that's what we did. Well, that's that's an amazing story. I mean, I'm always talking on the podcast and on the on the blog. You know, the importance of having a good funnel in place to actually capture all of the traffic that you're getting. You know, 
And, you know, when you're, when you're talking about SEO in particular, you need to be, you know, like really smart to actually capture all of that traffic. So that's, that's an amazing story. Now, I want to switch gears a little bit here. And I know that you got started uh, with, you know, LinkedIn, you know, as a mean of generating leads for this uh, business that you have, you know, when you're preparing a, a solution, a lead generation solution for um, the realtors professional. So what got you started with LinkedIn as a means of generating leads? Sure. Um, well, first of all, I knew that LinkedIn was a really good way to generate um, B2B leads. Mm -hmm. I know that there's uh, several people talking about how they, um, they generate LinkedIn leads right now. And um, I had heard somebody mention a tool. This, this was more recent. Uh, before with LinkedIn, I was basically trying to make connections with people uh, in the niches that I was trying to go after. Mm -hmm. And then I would offer them you know, something like a, a free uh, consultation over the phone. Or I would offer them some, some kind of free information to get them on the phone with me and then to offer my service. That's what I was doing before. I was doing a lot of it manually. Um, I was looking at profiles and connecting with people and sending them uh, messages that way through LinkedIn. And I got a decent amount of clients from that. But then I heard some people talking about this software, which is called Autopilot for LinkedIn. And Autopilot for LinkedIn is really cool because what the software does it's a plugin that works with either Chrome or with Firefox. And what it does is it automatically visits profiles on LinkedIn so that you don't have to do it. When other people see that you visited their profile, it plays on people's curiosity. And frankly, it plays on their vanity too because we all want to see who's looking at us. So then when they look at back at my profile, then I choose the opportunity to uh, send them a friend request if they haven't added me already. And if they have added me, I accept their friend request and send them a message. Usually the message says something like, hey, you know, I'm offering this to only my LinkedIn contacts. Uh, would you like to get on a free uh, consultation with me so I can show you uh, what your competitors are doing right now to generate leads online. To show them that, you know, for us that are in the internet marketing game, it's really easy. There are several tools out there that you can use. There are SpyFu, SEMrush, um, things like that, where you can show people's competitors and what they're doing online. Mm -hmm. But before I started using the software, the main thing that I, I needed to do was optimize my LinkedIn profile. A lot of people use LinkedIn uh, as a resume, so to speak. Like you put your profile on LinkedIn and they set it up as a resume. If you start thinking, if you're trying to generate B2B business with LinkedIn, you should start thinking of your profile as a landing page instead of a resume. So with a landing page, we all know that less is more. With LinkedIn, you want to try to have the most specific information as possible and with really good benefits and value uh, on your resume. For example, one of the things that you can do with LinkedIn is that you can use the, the space where your name goes to add a headline. And then right below your name, you, you can put a description and you can add, for example, a subheadline. And uh, the other thing you can do is you can add a banner on your LinkedIn profile. So when people look at your LinkedIn profile, they see the banner. Well, a lot of people just put pictures, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, that look nice. Well, you can go to canva.com, which is a free uh, editing and creation software, yeah. and you can uh, set up a call to action, for example, on the banner or you can set up some kind of headline, something that would benefit the people that you're trying to go after. So that's one way to get a lot of connections on LinkedIn and for people to even send you messages, hey, I'm interested in what you're offering. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, I totally get what you're saying. So, you know, it all starts with a good LinkedIn profile and optimize lead generating LinkedIn profiles because, you know, after hearing you say that, 
I definitely need to go ahead and revise my LinkedIn profile because it's being used as a resume, you know, it's being used, I mean, it's common belief. In fact, it's the way, you know, even LinkedIn, they are advising you to do it that way, you know. I've always seen, you know, LinkedIn as a way of, you know, getting a new job or getting a new promotion, whatever. But, you know, I really like what you're saying to, to actually focusing your LinkedIn profile to become a landing page. And, you know, as we have been preaching on the podcast, the least options you have on a landing page, the better. I mean, when you have too many options on a landing page, your visitor will get, you know, overwhelmed or confused and they will leave. So I think that's a really good strategy. And then what you're doing is to tap into other people's profiles with this little tool, you know, where they can check, uh, check back on you and add you, you know, based on the um, optimized profile that you already have. Now, what would you say makes your approach? I mean, these are unique tools that, uh, you know, we could use. I mean, we could have, you know, a link or two maybe at the end of the podcast uh, beneath this episode so that they can check the tool out. But what makes your approach so unique? Because you know the market, you know the realtor market and the real estate market, and you are probably talking their lingo, you know, and talking their language and referring to them on their own terms. So what makes your approach so unique so that you know exactly what to tell them or messaging them or when turning those leads into actual, you know, calls or consultation clients? How, how do you pull that off? You know, this is going to sound kind of cliche, but really, I think besides the tools, besides the strategy that I use on LinkedIn, my main goal when I'm trying to generate prospects on LinkedIn is to get on the phone with them. Once I do that, I think that what makes my approach unique is that I know exactly who my target clients are. If I'm going to if I'm going to go after a type of small business owner that I don't know, I'm going to uh, research uh, do some research on that business owner and find out exactly what they need, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And what their problems are and what their hiccups. Um, right now, I said that I'm talking to a lot of mortgage brokers and not only because they have a huge need for the service, but also because I know exactly how to talk to them because I was that person before. Mm-hmm. Uh, to give you a quick example, I talked to somebody a couple days ago and she has been in the business for over 15 years. And uh, when I said to her, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with going to realtor meetings and handing out your business cards, trying to build relationships with realtors. She immediately said, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. So she could relate with me and I could relate with her because I know exactly what she's doing and what they're trying to do to generate business right now. So it was interesting because, you know, when I, when I told her what I used to do, which was I started generating leads for realtor agents, even though she had been in the business for over 15 years, that's something that she hadn't thought about. She's like, wow, you know, that's, you know, I never even thought about that. So, um, again, like I said, you know, to narrow it down, I think what, what makes my approach different and unique is the fact that I know exactly who I'm, who I'm targeting. All right. Okay. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. And, you know, right now you're, you're trying to put them on the phone with you, you know, and you close them on the phone. We have had some requests of, on, on uh, the Facebook group, you know, the real internal marketing group to actually generate leads via LinkedIn. And I think this is a great strategy. Have you considered the possibility on, you know, sending them some kind of lead magnet up front so that you can, you know, follow up with them or, you know, uh, inviting them, for example, into a webinar where you can then sell your product or your services. Have you thought about that? And and in the past, it's that part of your current strategy. Are you trying to implement that somehow? Because, you know, LinkedIn, the way you're putting it or the way we we, we are covering on this episode, it could be pretty much like any other source of traffic with the caveat that, you know, it's highly targeted people that you're targeting them on purpose. You can get so granular that you can actually target on an individual basis. You know, I would say that it's even more granular than Facebook, (laughs) you know? Exactly. Right. How would you keep delivering value to to those people uh, once you have, you know, put them through the phone call or even before putting them 
uh, on the phone call. Have you have you thought about the possibility of giving away some kind of lead magnet or or making them join to in a webinar to tell them what your and how can you help them? Yes. So um, one thing that I didn't mention about LinkedIn is that uh, you can put uh, projects up that you're working on, uh-huh. and uh, when you put projects up, you can uh, put a link to your site. What I had set up was a link to my site, and I noticed that I was getting a good amount of clicks on that link from my LinkedIn profile. So what I'm actually working on developing right now is a a pretty good lead magnet so that when people see my profile and they see my projects and they click on my page, they can go to my uh, landing page, my lead magnet page, and opt in. So that's definitely one thing that I'm working on. And uh, like you said, with with LinkedIn, um, you can be very granular. Mm -hmm. So when I choose to uh, use that software to look at LinkedIn profiles, I don't just pick random profiles to look at. I add myself to groups on LinkedIn that I want to go after. Mm -hmm. For example, right now, uh, you know, mortgage broker groups. And I choose the people who are in that group who are either uh, the owners or uh, the managers of their company. And I use the software to target only those profiles. So you know you're exactly talking to the people that's making the call, that's making the, the decision, right? Exactly. As far as traffic for LinkedIn goes, you know, I've tried uh, paid traffic uh, with LinkedIn before. And I didn't have very good results, but I think that I'm going to try it again because I think that my strategy um, that I used to get traffic from LinkedIn, I think um, I tried it maybe about a year ago. It wasn't uh, very good because I didn't have uh, a good targeting, but I think I'm going to try it again. And, you know, LinkedIn, a lot of people think that it's really expensive. For example, you know, they charge at thirty dollars. They start charging at thirty dollars per uh, CPM. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Right, right. And uh, that may sound like a lot, but I think the thing with LinkedIn is that it may take you a few days to get through that thirty dollars to for people to see the ad because LinkedIn is not like Facebook right. where people are on it all mm-hmm, day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know what you're saying. So I think paid. Uh, there's an opportunity to get in with paid advertising on LinkedIn. Awesome, awesome. And even further, if you have, you know, an optimized uh, funnel, quote unquote, you know, that begins with your LinkedIn uh, profile. Exactly. Once you you have that, I mean, I I bet that you will get a lot more bang for your buck because you are actually sending people through the funnel that you have created on LinkedIn. So I think that's that's amazing. All right, so uh, kind of, uh, I'd like to start wrapping up this episode, which I think is being a lot of value and, you know, I need to start working on my profile on LinkedIn, like ASAP. Now, you know, we are all about revenue and generating more revenue on the podcast. And if you were, you know, to start over or if you were to advise somebody on how to start bringing leads via LinkedIn to generate more revenue, what would you say to them? Where would you start? The first thing that I would say is I would need, I would tell them to optimize their LinkedIn profile. I would tell them to eliminate things that are not relevant to what they are currently working on or offering. Then I would tell them to join groups on LinkedIn that they're trying to go after and just start going through those groups and figuring out, you know, who their target clients are, uh, what they're looking for, see on the groups the questions that they're asking. Uh, the problems that they're running into, uh, what they're talking about. Um, And with all of that, you can start building a a pretty good profile of who uh, your clients are. All right, Jeremiah, I really appreciate you taking the time for this interview. I think it's been a lot of value. And, you know, in in case of people want to get in touch with you, um, what, what should they do or should they go? Um, you know, I really don't have anything to offer or um, to sell right now to you guys, but um, you're welcome to uh, add me on Facebook. I'll give it on my uh, my Facebook um, uh, profile, okay. 
And um, if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to send me a message. I'd be happy to see if I can help you out. Amazing, amazing. And we will also put, if that's okay with you, the link to your LinkedIn profile so that people can check you out and check out what you're doing along as, as your Facebook account so that they can get in touch with you. Again, Jeremiah, thank you very much for being part of the podcast and I hope to see you around very soon. All right, well, thank you very much, Hernan, and I'm glad to be here. Awesome, bye-bye.